Hello, Internet and Wingapo. My name is Sonia Ebe Acosta, also known as Drusilla Thrace, and this is my web series, There and Back Again. I can use that because Peter Jackson didn't. Home is behind the world ahead. And there are many paths to travel. Shadow to the edge of night until the stars are all alight. Mist and shadow, cloud and shade, I shall fade. So, a little bit about myself. I'm a singer slash wannabe songwriter slash actress combatant slash massive nerd. Drusilla Thrace, my handle is taken from Drusilla from Buffy the Vampire Slayer and Kara Thrace from Battlestar Galactica. I also respond to Frodo, Arya, Ayla, Buffy, River, and Leela. Kudos if you can name all of those fandoms. Um, you know, typical New York City starving artist wanting to make it in the entertainment business, but I'm taking a hiatus from the hustle and bustle of the city to travel the world for a year or so. I don't believe that we are going to curb our addiction to fossil fuels and plastics in time to stall or prevent climate change. Um, you know, we the reasonable know and understand everything that's happening. We worry about it and, and we don't deny climate change, but the rest and frankly, most of the aforementioned reasonables are not doing anything on a, not, not doing very much of anything on a day to day to help fix the problem. And that has a lot to do more with less with people not wanting or not caring and more with it not being part of the culture here on this side of the world. Waste is the culture on this side of the world. Waste is the culture of America. Um, so, I'm off to see the world. Very much like the genie. I'm going with the genie. I'm off to see the world, and I'm going to take this GoPro to the most beautiful places that I've heard of or haven't heard of yet, or gorgeous nature preserves and wildlife preserves and endangered areas, and show you guys how rare and beautiful this planet is. Climate change. Um, it's atrocious how badly human beings treat their planet. Right? Period. Like, do you think Earth is mom? Because Earth is, like, Earth, Earth is... will live long after we're gone. Oh, absolutely. Um, my issue is not just with how we treat, uh, not how we treat the Earth, but how we treat animals in general. How we treat them as lesser than the human species. Church. Um, not just about the cogent animals, like elephants, and whales and dolphins. Which often we kill more than all the other ones. Absolutely, but also non cogent animals or non regarded as cogent animals. How we treat the the species in general. We're going to be responsible for the next big extinctions and unless Number we Number six unless we change our ways rapidly, that's what's going to happen. Um, so, I mean, some of you are already eye-rolling and kind of thinking, oh, here we go, fear-mongering, global warmest, conspiracy theories, this girl, the Earth is gonna die, we're all doomed. Okay, here's the fact of the matter. Earth will be fine. There have been five mass extinctions in her history already. New Life has always managed to find a way over the last 4.56 bill or so, how long the Earth has been alive. If and when we cause the sixth, the Great Earth Mother will right herself in around 50 million years or so, and there will be more life on this planet. We can't kill the Earth. She is so much stronger than that. We can, however, kill ourselves and everybody in our company. Um, 250 million years ago, the Permian-Triassic extinction event was the deadliest of the five mass extinctions so far. Essentially 90 to 96 or 98% of all life on Earth went extinct. Um, that was the closest we know of that we've come to life on Earth pretty much ending. Okay, but the reason that this happened was a string of events, either some people suspect an asteroid, 
There's a huge fingerprint across Siberia that indicates that a string of volcanoes ruptured and just started spewing tons and tons and tons of CO2 and noxious gases into the air for hundreds of years. Now, a couple of you are like, well, of course the life ended, you know, that much CO2 in the air for hundreds of years. That's a long time. The Industrial Revolution started in 1760. That's 255 years ago. We've been spewing these gases into the air for hundreds of years now. If life went extinct from that much environmental poisoning, it is pretty safe to assume that it's going to happen again. Earth doesn't care where the CO2 comes from. If it's too much, we choke. And we've been, you know, doing this for 255 years. It's, it's illegal. It's illegal not to recycle in New York City, and yet... Welcome to an average street in New York City. I am on the corner of 36th and 8th. These are the piles of trash at the end of the day, like any big city. Look, cardboard is set aside for recycling. Isn't that great? Let's see how much actually gets recycled. That could have been recycled. Paper. 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 Plastic. That could have been recycled. Ooh, check it out. It's like the trash dance. Trash, trash. Trashy, trash, trash. Big giant plastic bag. Some more trash over here. Some more recyclable things there. This used to be some paper. That used to be a cup. That plastic cup top. That paper bag, that paper, that paper, that paper, that paper. That plastic cup top. Landfill, all for the landfill. All for the love of the landfill, I suppose. Recyclable paper. Rigid plastic on the floor. There is not a little bit of clean street I can think of anymore. I can't even. I just I can't like what the f is it that hard? Is it that hard? Disappointing, right? It's illegal not to recycle in New York, and yet, you know, it's not even illegal for businesses not to recycle. It's only illegal to not personally recycle, which makes no sense whatsoever. But looking on the positives, I'm going to go everywhere in the world and see how they do things and see all their natural wonders before they're all gone. So we are going to start in my hometown of San Juan, Puerto Rico. I'm going to go back home for a couple weeks and start the web series there, show you guys where I'm from, say, look at a couple areas of Puerto Rico that I personally have never been to. I'm very excited about. We're going to have a little layover in New York. And then we are off to Reykjavik, Iceland. Let me show you guys my map. So we start in Puerto Rico. We make our way back up to New York. We go to Iceland. Then we go to Sweden. And from Sweden, I'm gonna make my way down into Europe. All the little stars are national parks, reserves, beautiful areas. Etc. Etc. I'll make my way through Europe and then I'll make my way to Turkey, make my way down Egypt and then over to Ethiopia and Southeast Africa. I am not going to West Africa. Sorry, guys. I'm just, I'm not doing it. Uh, <laughs> um, we're going to go down Southeast Africa till we hit the South, Namibia and the desert that inspired Dune. And then spend some time in Cape Town, maybe hit Madagascar, go to the Maldives. After the Maldives, I'll spend some time in India and Nepal. I'm going to see if I can visit China, but their visas are crazy, so it might not happen. But I want to go to the Li River. That is the one and only destination in China I want to do, because I am not breathing that smog, Shanghai. No. Um, so then we're going to go all the way down the South Pacific, make our way into Australia and the Great Barrier Reef. Which I'm gonna get uh, I'm gonna get my scuba certification back, but when I'm back home in Puerto Rico, I was scuba certified as a junior, but I didn't um, actually end up. I mean, I got the I got the certification. We never picked up the card, and I never went scuba diving after that. So I'm gonna get my scuba certification so I can scuba dive the Great Barrier Reef before they close it to the public, because I have a feeling that's gonna happen in a couple years. I'm going to New Zealand. I'm going to call it New Zealand to be respectful, but we all know where I'm going and how long I'm going to be there because, duh. Because, duh. <laughs> um, and then we're going to make our way from Middle Earth and we're going to start back down in the Patagonia area of South America where there's really beautiful nature preserves. I'm going to make my way up 
South America. I'm gonna go to Easter Island when I'm in Chile. I'm gonna make my way up this way. I'm gonna go spend some time in Ecuador and the Galapagos, obviously, because they're dying. Um, a couple things over here on the top of South America, and then make my way up through Central America and Mexico, and then I'm gonna see the beautiful parts of America, like the Great Can the Grand Canyon and Yosemite and Yellowstone and Glacier National Park and all, you know, I've, I've seen a lot of America, but I've not seen the most beautiful natural parts. Finish off in Denver and then we're back to New York. That is the plan. They tell you to make a plan and don't plan to stick to it. So I don't plan to stick to it, but that's my plan for now. Um, just want to leave you guys with one last thing for the first episode. I was watching this video on YouTube on plate tectonics, which essentially, well, you know what? Here's the video. All right, guys, here's that video I was talking about. Um, it's called Plate Tectonics in Action. Their link is in the little box of info under the video. I just find this amazing. Like, look at this. The, the, this, this world is a living, breathing, moving organism. It's... It's alive. She's alive. It... it, it Everybody's searching for God, everybody's searching for this, everybody's searching for answers, everybody's searching for explanations, how we got here, why, when, who did this, how, why, and whatever it was that made it possible for this rock to suck itself, or for these chunks of rock to swirl themselves into a big rock and, and have that contain itself, and then all of a sudden just live just create things that that create that, that de evolve into little other things that breathe and then suddenly think and then suddenly <sighs> earth is a god she is a goddess this this thing that we are on is our this is what we are made of we are talking monkeys on an organic spaceship flying around a star in a contained cluster of stars swirling around next to a sea of other clusters of stars swirling around with their own little organic spaceships and maybe other talking monkeys or talking birds or whatever the is out there there's there's gotta be something we're not alone but this is where we need to be if the human race wants to survive long enough to see these other worlds and to be remembered to have more than just the hunk of metal the hunk of glorious information bringing genius metal that is Voyager 1 out there playing music into the universe that cannot be the last and only thing some other sentient being picks up and then comes and finds this rock and maybe digs up the remains and figures out what happened the way that we did if you want the human race to be the stuff of legend Barney Stinson style Firefly style. We gotta be able to breathe before we get that technology. So huge shout outs to my editor, Josh. Say hi, Josh. He's gonna be editing from afar for this whole web series. He's going to be the one in charge of making sure that you guys can see all of my adventures. Big kudos and thank yous. Um, Again, if you guys have any suggestions or any comments or any kind of travel tips or anything, please leave it in the comments on the video. I'll do my best to respond, and I hope you guys enjoy following my series and how beautiful this world is. I'm very, very excited, so... <laughs> Yee!